Hi, it's Ross Pluskin here at the Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. Now, when I first toured here, and when I was fortunate enough to get my job here at TSA, I can't tell you. There's everything in our farm systems are all really cool, but I, my eyes were glued to the refugiums the second I walked into this place. The refugiums, I mean, how could you not be bewitched? All that beautiful pom-pom grassal area, tumbling around, the monodactylus frolicking in it. Ah, we love our refugiums here at TSA, and we think you should too. Uh, so today, let's talk a little bit about some general reasons why refugiums are so good for a reef tank and why one may want to make the choice to include it. Now, the choice to have a refugium or not uh, can be a little bit of a dichotomy. Some people claim it's a little bit easier to just have a straight up sump and donate all that time and water volume to just having mechanical and chemical filtration. But having a refugium can provide some direct and even some more subtle benefits to the reef aquarist. So let's go over a few. Now the first is one of the most popular reasons uh, and advertised reasons why people have refugiums. Uh, to be a nutrient sink. All the pom-pom grassalaria that you see around here is moving, it's, gonna, it's being illuminated by this powerful light and it is photosynthesizing. It is taking in nitrates and phosphates, using those to develop sugars, grow, releasing oxygen as a byproduct. But incidentally, when it's consuming those nitrates and it's consuming those phosphates, it is trapping them inside the cells of the gracilaria tissue. Now, whether or not it's gonna be consuming more phosphate or nitrate definitely depends on the intensity and spectrum of light that you're using and the flow. But in general, we can see here how this is a means of taking those inescapable dissolved nutrients that can cause all kinds of issues when they build up in a reef system, and we can trap them. We can trap them into a big tuft of grassalaria that can then get be fed off to tangs or fed off to urchins or just thrown in the garbage and exported. So that's the first major thing. The second major consideration is the inverse of this. We see that we have a bunch of monos swimming around in this tank. One of the issues that we have because of our extremely high levels of coral production here at the TSA farm is that we run the risk of stripping out our nutrients. We run the risk of actually depleting nitrate and phosphate to levels that are near undetectable. And if we do that, well, that throws our whole operation in a skew. And reefing is a pursuit of balance after all. So by having excess fish operating in here, you know, in some of our refugiums, we even have more charismatic uh, predators like grunts. They're providing a nutrient source so that we can always provide something of a surplus uh, that's going through a biological context before it's being released back into our corals. An additional very important caveat to this photosynthetic action being delivered by the gracilaria is something that we really utilize here at Top Shelf. It's pH modulation. Now, let's say I just have a display tank with a bunch of corals in it and then a dark uh, sump that doesn't have any light on it whatsoever. Now, if we shut the lights off for our normal dark cycle in our reef tank, that photosynthetic activity that's going down with the algae and all the other corals, that's gone. That means all the carbon dioxide that normally would be absorbed through that photosynthetic action, directly and indirectly, is not getting absorbed. And the more carbon dioxide that lingers in the aquarium, and it will increase because things are still eating and respiring, that pH will eventually be driven down because of the more concentrated carbon dioxide. And if we have a refugium that is illuminated when the display aquarium is off, we have a means for continuing that photosynthetic drive. So if there's any surplus carbon dioxide that's being delivered into the tank water, it will then be absorbed through the photosynthetic action of the algae. Again, like the nutrients, this is a balancing act of finding the right algae, the right light, and the right lighting schedule to kind of balance out what's going on in your display aquarium. But in general, here at Top Shelf, we really enjoy the ability to maintain our pH by having something that's still photosynthesizing even when the above lights are off. Uh, the third major consideration that we have here is that all this substrate, this gracilaria, and anything else that we have in the refugium, it is substrate for pods, possum shrimp, all kinds of useful cleanup crew, micro cleanup crew, and invertebrates that will have a place to flourish, have a place where they have access to the waste coming in from the display aquarium, and more importantly, have a place where they can build up in population to the point where a surplus will be exported into the flow and then released back into the display. Kind of like a constant pod dose, doser, if you will. So that if you have a bunch of mandarins or other pod eaters in the top, 
uh, it's much less likely that they'll be able to deplete the entire system because they don't have access to some of it. Something else that should be considered is a little bit of that. Um, same sentiment in a way. If you have a refugium, you may choose to hide it underneath a cabinet, or you may not. Maybe you have it on the side of the aquarium. Maybe you even have a clear or doorless cabinet where the refugium acts as a secondary display tank. Is there a fish that you really wanted to keep, but it just won't work in your reef tank because you have a bunch of mean, nasty damsels or an aggressive predatory grouper? Why not try it in the refugium if the water quality permits? Do you have a bunch of cleanup crew that you really want to put into the tank so you can have something to scrape at some algae, but you just can't have it in the display for any reason? Well, throw in the refugium. Are there, you having some issues with some corals? Let's say all your SPS is, is loving it, but maybe you have LPS or even some soft corals that are just not loving life. There's not enough nutrients and sludge. Oh, I'm starving. Throw it in the refugium. A refugium can act as a wonderful secondary display that can house all kinds of useful secondary organisms, but can also be a wonderful home for another organism that shares the water quality of the two systems, but uh, still independent. So in conclusion, these are a few reasons why we love refugiums here at Top Shelf. They provide a means of modulating your water quality. They provide a means of having a living sump with all kinds of biological filtration and living cleanup crew. And they also provide a means of expelling surplus live feeds that grow in that refugium to your fish and display aquarium. And they also provide a means to have a secondary display so that you can maybe have a little bit more multi-complexity with what you're trying to show off as far as the two ecosystems that you've created, which are slowly pursuing balance with one another. So those are refugiums. We love having them. We love talking about them. So we'll see you next time.